But now we get to Kevin Stefanski. Kevin Stefanski is now in the meeting room with Jimmy Haslam, two-time coach of the year. Um, I, I've shown that I've been able to collaborate and work with a multitude of different people. I've ever I've been flexible. I've shown that I've been able to run a, 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 a vertical passing game. I've shown that I had the ability to work with a running game. Um, you know, during the time period, we did everything that we could do to get Deshaun Watson comfortable. Um, that means switching offensive coordinators. You know, me and Alex Van Pelt, we came into this thing together. Uh, you know, he was he was part of the offense that we ran, but we did exactly what you told us to do. You did exactly what the organization thought was best, and that was going to a, a, a vertical passing attack with Deshaun Watson. Obviously, that didn't work with Deshaun, and I think mostly not because of us not trying. It's just the injuries, you know, injury to the shoulder, injury to the Achilles heel. Unfortunately, the player that we we, we were going after a couple of years ago is not the player that we have right now. Um, and so one of the things that I've shown, though, is not only uh, can I work with a guy like Deshaun Watson, but I've shown the, the propensity to be able to work with guys that are lesser talented guys than, than um, Deshaun Watson, the Case Keenum's, the the Flacco's who was accelerated age. Uh, I've even had Baker's Mayfield's previous to what he's doing now, his best years, right? And even with Baker, I think we laid a lot of those foundations that Baker is now reaping some of the benefits of, right? Some of those foundational things that we taught here in Cleveland in 2020 uh, throughout his career here are some of the things that you, when you watch Baker Mayfield on tape, you can see the foundations and the seeds of what we planted. Um, you know, in terms of our, our offense and in terms of the way things went, I just think that if you look at it from, from a standpoint of me being a person that's taken what's given to me, um, you know, things have been a little rough. Uh, you take a look at some of the, the durability issues that we've had with some of the um, guys that were here. The offensive line, I think the offensive line got old right in front of our eyes. I mean, you know, when we talk about renegotiating these contracts, you look at the name, the number of guys, uh, Jack Conklin, old right in front of your face. Joe Batonio, old right in front of your face. Uh, you, you, you get Wyatt Teller, who's been injured the last three or four years. He's still a good player, but his body's breaking down on him. Uh, we got a year out of Ethan Poachers, right? It looked like he was going to be a guy after we signed him. He kind of regressed. And then Jed Wills, I think that was one of our biggest things. Go back and look at it. You know, uh, when you have a Jed Wills at left tackle, he's been inconsistent. And there were guys on the board like Tristan Wirth that, you know, the scouting department basically missed on. Uh, he's an all-pro, and we got a guy who now is is one of, you know, the bottom tackles, the starting caliber tackle in, in the league. Um, I also believe that when you take a look at it, you lose your best player, Nuke Chubb. Um, so we've been playing uh, without any explosive playmakers on offense. I mean, we got the most we could out of Mari Cooper, right? Um, you, you take a look at the trades we made. Elijah Moore wasn't the impact uh, speed guy that we thought we were getting. Jerry Judy is a younger Amari Cooper, which doesn't mean – that means much for our vertical passing game. And then when we're running a vertical passing game without vertical threats, I mean, how dangerous can you be? I think that one of the things that you need to, we need to look at and understand here is, is this. Um, when you're drafting a quarterback, one of the things that we got to that you had to understand is: Do you want to bring in another guy that's fresh, that's young? You want to bring in a, an offensive-minded head coach? Um, can you tell me a lot more of an offensive-minded head coach that's been uh, that's more decorated than me? Can you tell uh, 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 you know an off, uh, uh, offensive-minded uh, uh, offensive coordinator that has worked with more quarterbacks than I have? I've seen them all shape sizes and everything, whether they're mobile, non-mobile, shorter, taller, big arms, smaller arms, game managers. Uh, I've seen them all in between. And one thing that I've yet to be able to do here is this. I've yet been able to sit back, evaluate, and find a quarterback that I feel fits my system that has elite dynamic talent. I've always done well with less. But can you imagine what I'm able to do with this system, with, with, with retooling what we do, with a quarterback that can read and react and a quarterback that can run the play action with a big arm that's younger, that's more, that, that doesn't have any uh, off-the-field issues, no baggage, and we can grow together. 
I've always been in forced marriages. Let's get somebody that we can grow together, that me me and this, this new quarterback have a shared way of thinking about things and one shared vision. I think that's what we need to get to. And then we build around the quarterback. Before, we haven't done that so much in, in, in the last few years. We haven't built around the quarterback. Let's get our guy, build everything around him, and then take that guy into that new dome. And, 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 the, and the people want to change. The people want a fresh change, right? They want a new taste. They want a new new taste in their mouth, right? We need to get this. We need to get everybody on one one accord. And maybe there's a new, there needs to be a new, I don't know, new approach at uh, new approach when you're looking at it from from a GM's eyes. Maybe we need a new scouting concept. I haven't been excited about the the explosiveness at, at our skill positions on defense. I, I know Jim Schwartz would love to have some corners that can move a little better. I know he wouldn't want to find another explosive end off the off the edge to f- go with Miles Garrett. I know you. I know we would love to get to. I know I would love two or three more receivers to get vertical. And just because you got tight ends, don't mean those tight ends can't get vertical. What about another guy that can move like David Njoku? And I'm telling you this. I'm not selling you on a major rebuild. I'm selling you on a mini build. Bear with me, Jimmy. I'm selling you on a mini build. What we can do, we can do what the Texans did. Quarterbacks are coming out now more ready than ever. You look at what they're doing with C.J. Stroud. You look at what you do with Jaden Daniels. This could be a mini rebuild. We retool here or there. We get somebody in here that can evaluate the top-notch uh, draft uh, you know, picks coming out of college. And I'm going to tell you what. we It's not a five, six, seven-year thing. This can be a two- to three-year thing. Trust me. Trust me. Now, you break it down like that. Mm. I like what he said at the end, though. That might that mini build, that two to three on the run. You get your quarterback, then you build around it. I like the fact that he said, I didn't want a quarterback in lockstep. Somebody that I can believe in, he believed in me, and we moved to the future with this thing. I've been with these arranged marriages. Let me, and my, and my playbook works. The playbook has shown dividends. Either way, I think it's a, a, it, it's, it's a compelling conversation. Do you think Jimmy Haslam would take that? What do you think about that? Do you think uh, that who has the better case? Andrew Barry, Kevin Stefanski, you let me know. These are the type of things that you got to go through. These are the things that we're going to be thinking about as a Browns fan base moving forward because these things are all in play. While everybody else is telling you the season is over, turn it off, don't worry about it. Actually, this is what you're supposed to be watching because this is going to tell you your future. Change the way you're thinking. It's not about none of that no more. You got to flip the you got to flip the switch. You are now in evaluation mode. If you're a good solid Browns fan, you're supposed to be thinking I'm evaluating the talent coming out of college. Y'all better hey, we didn't even talk draft in this city for years. You better get back on it. You better hey, who you want at the top of the draft, you better be looking at these blogs. You also need to be talking and evaluating your general manager and your head football coach every single week. And that's the important part of this Brown season moving forward.